Hey y'all, so I get this question all the time. Shauna, want to reduce taxes, how do I do it? I've, I've been told I should start a small business. Yeah, I'm in, always in. Starting a small business, whether it's an actual brick and mortar or you're doing a side gig like Uber, Lyft, um, anything that is 1099 income, so maybe some side consulting if you're an attorney, something like that, I am all about starting a business. Now, there's some caveats. When does your business actually start? Okay, so let's say, for example, that you are an attorney. Okay. And you are going to do, you, you know, for tax strategy purposes, right? We're all about the tax strategy for tax strategy purposes. You know that you're going to start a side business, right? Your tax strategist has told you to do so. So you buy a new computer, uh, you put a desk at your home, you get a comfy chair to sit in. Uh, maybe you set up a camera and maybe you buy like a new iPad, something like that. Uh, maybe a whole new computer specifically for this business. Well, if you do all of that, let's just make up an example. Let's say you decide you're going to start your business. It's December 1st. Okay. End of the year, December 1st, you have started, you've started buying everything. Okay. December 31st rolls around. You do not have any income. So you've set yourself up. Maybe you set up an LLC or something like that. You've spent money, right? To set up this business, but has your business actually started? You do not have any income of any kind. In this example, you have no income. Okay. So there are a couple of things that are going to happen here. All right. You must be active in order for a business to get current tax deductions. You must be active. Now, what does that mean, Shauna? Right. You have to be able to prove that you are in fact in business, which means that you must have a product or service to sell. Okay. Or if it's real estate that you have some real estate up for rent. Okay. There's a court case that says, okay, great. Well, in this case, my lawyer, he is in business, right? He's maybe got some, he posted some ads. He talked to some clients at a networking event, said, yes, here's my business card, right? Like, call me, I can do this consulting on the side for you. Okay. Yeah. The court case effectively has said in recent court case has said that you must have some income. You got to have some income. Okay. That first year, that month of December that that attorney set up, those expenses are going to be non-deductible for the first year. There's some caveats here. I'll go into them. Non-deductible for the first year because he has no income. Okay. They're going to be capitalized as what's called startup expenses. Okay. Now, generally big picture here, <clears throat> the IRS says that in order to have a business and not a hobby, you guys have heard me talk about hobbies quite a bit to have a business and not a hobby, you really should be showing profit that you have a profit motive. Okay. You do, I should rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. You don't necessarily have to show profit, like actual net profit. The first two years you are allowed to have losses, but you must show that you have a profit motive, that you are trying to make a profit. Okay. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to show profit in year three, but it's good. <laughs> okay. The IRS can start to look if you have loss, 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 because at what point do you decide that being in business is no longer smart? You're just spending more money than you're making. Okay. So that first year, the attorney, all the expenses that they spent, the desk and the computer and getting everything set up, those expenses are going to get capitalized. Okay. The next year, let's so now we're into the new year. The attorney gets a client. Yay. And they make some money. Okay. When they make money, now you can start taking those capitalized expenses, those startup expenses. Okay. There, there are some tricky little things in the tax code. You might be able to get the first $5,000 in the first year of business that you spent on setting everything up. But you really, you got to meet a bunch of qualifications. So make sure you're talking to your tax strategist or your CPA to see if you meet those qualifications. Okay. Now <clears throat> the Harrison tax court case decision that was made in 2022. Okay. Uh, the tax court had initially decided that the research and solicitation of potential customers was not enough to show that Harrison was actually carrying on a business. She's an attorney, what we were just talking about. Okay. So this really makes me concerned about this kind of ruling for anyone that's in business. You have to show there are four categories that the IRS is really looking for to show whether you are in fact attempting to do a business. Okay. So are you carrying on in a business like fashion? 
Are you going to networking events? Are you handing out business cards? Are you uh, really putting in number two, the time and effort, okay? Sufficient time and effort to actually try to get the business off the ground, actually try to make some money, okay? The third one, and, and this one's kind of hard for me, so we're gonna get into it. The third one, do you have prior success in this business, okay, or in any business? Or are you using coaches, mentors, consultants who have prior success, okay? Now, this is a two prong. So do you have prior success? Maybe, maybe not. If you've never done this before and you're starting a brand new business, you would fail that test. You don't have any prior success to bank on here, okay? But are you using coaches, mentors, professionals, consultants to help you? They, they do have success and they're teaching you? The IRS will give you a pass, okay? Because why would you be spending good money on a mentor, on a coach, on a professional a a consultant to guide you in a new business if you weren't actually trying to make the money back? Like, why would you spend money with somebody else if you didn't want to get the money back? So that one's good, okay? Now, the fourth one is, do you have a clear profit motive? Now, this one is pretty, you know, kind of, kind of vague, a clear profit motive. Well, how do I prove that I had a clear profit motive? I would recommend that you talk about it with friends. Hey, I'm starting a new business. Instead of buying Christmas presents, instead of buying a Christmas trusts from somebody else, buy a trust for me, your attorney. And you know, are you are you trying to earn income? Are you posting on Craigslist for clients? Are you joining, as I said, joining a network group where you're again spending money to join a group to try to make more money, right? Do you have a clear profit motive? So these are kind of your four categories. So let's go over them again. Carrying business on in a business-like fashion, okay? So doing meetings, doing networking, uh, showing up on time, dressing professionally, these kinds of things. Are you spending sufficient time and effort? Okay, big one. So if you're spending 10 minutes and you expect to write off your brand new $20,000 computer, a new business car, good luck, right? Number three, do you, ha do you have prior success or have you hired coaches, mentors, consultants who have prior success, okay? And number four is a clear profit motive. Are you trying to make money at this, okay? Now, these are the categories, these are four categories. So these things have different weights and it's all up to the IRS agent. If you get audited, of course, it's up to the IRS agent to determine, is this, you know, do you meet these four categories? Do you meet their belief? This is the hard, in my opinion, the fifth category, okay? Do you meet the IRS's agent belief that you were in fact trying to start a valid business and you are trying to make profit from it, okay? So big, big points here, guys. We get this question all the time. We always wanna make sure, especially if you're starting on a tax strategy, that you're starting off on the right foot. So you do need to be able to answer these four questions. Uh, now, if you have any other questions, we love answering questions. So give us some questions. Uh, throw them in Tax Goddess. If you go to Tax Goddess forward slash FAQS facts, you can ask a question and we do kind of get a little overwhelmed, but throw some questions and let's see if we can get you an answer from the Tax Goddess. So in the meantime, I hope you all are having a wonderful day. And of course, if you are looking for tax strategies, don't hesitate to reach out to the team and I. We'd love to see what we can do to help you become one of these statistics right here, saving tons of money on your next tax bill. All right. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you later. Bye.